Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back. If you're returning, my last video with the Micah Francis case, we were looking at Regina Ward and her interview and talking about what's going to happen next after they reached a global settlement. Part one will be linked down below if you missed it and want to check it out. Otherwise, we're going to continue right where we left off. I want to shift gears to the criminal side of this. There have been reports, uh, several media outlets here on the coast, national outlets as well, have reported that there's a federal component to this investigation beyond the Robeson County investigation into Micah's death. We've also been told that there are investigations related to other potential victims of John Paul Miller. Let me ask you this. What can you tell us from your perspective about any potential criminal investigations into John Paul and are any of your clients cooperating with those? Right. So um, one of the things that I have said over and over is basically, for instance, I have an order stating that Micah's personal property, when the legal authorities are finished with their investigation, that it'll be returned um, to my office. Um, I have sent a couple of letters uh, to the Robinson County Sheriff's Department saying, hey, I have an order give us the stuff because you've completed your investigation from what we understand, right? You have your finding. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they denied the request, so they were not going to release the property at this time. Um, By the way, if you're catching up from part one, we learned that um, Micah's Apple Watch is currently being investigated and Regina requested it and basically law enforcement is not say, uh, not releasing it until they're done with their investigation. So that's what she's talking about in case you missed uh, the context from part one. That basically, um, you know, the FBI had come, had, they had called in the FBI um, and at this point they're not going to release the property. They wouldn't tell me specifically why. Um, you know, but it was like, the order says I get it when all legal authorities are complete. And so they've not released it to me. So I think that that is an indication that something is still going on as far as me having direct knowledge of it. No. And as far as them investigating or, or, um, excuse me, interviewing as well, certainly the family is cooperative in that matter, uh, if and when asked. Uh, certainly, we feel like we have a lot to offer up. Obviously. Um, yes. Let me ask this question. There are two lines of inquiry that we've been reliably informed are underway. An investigation into finances, potential assets that John Paul Miller may have hidden, commingled, uh, perhaps laundered, some have suggested. But then there's also allegations regarding to abuse, harassment, stalking, assault. Yes. For other Not to mention him uh, allegedly using church funds in order to hire these private investigators to stalk his wife. But we're going to glaze over that one. Mm -hmm. As those allegations kind of hang out there, obviously we have seen documented in, in detail in court filings from Micah's family, from her friends. Uh, from the first wife yes. of John Paul Miller, who alleged a host of abuse. Um, would it surprise you if there were those twin paths to this investigation? Not be surprised at all and actually hopeful. And as Micah said, God will come and he will take care of everything. Well, that's true. Let me ask this question. Um, arguably the most significant component of this story, and I think you would attest uh, to this at, at your press conference um, uh, in, the, in the immediate aftermath of one of the first hearings where, you know, yes, there were some items to discuss about what transpired in the court that day, but the focus of what you talked about and what I gather from, you know, watching the family on social media, one of their main focuses is how to protect other women, or other spouses, other people in relationships from being victimized in the same way that Micah was. And Absolutely. so the, the hashtag is justice for Micah, but the push on the coercive control legislation seems to be much bigger. Let me ask you this. There have been coercive control reform bills filed in South Carolina. They haven't gotten anywhere. Where do you see this debate going? And Let's talk a little bit about that issue, what you see as sort of the key pillars of an effective 
piece of legislation here in South Carolina. Yes, absolutely, and thank you for asking that because I think that it is uh, critical. Um, one of the wonderful things that has happened out, out of this horrible situation is that it has put a ginormous spotlight on this problem. This problem has existed forever. Um, women, particularly, and I know that men are, you know, are in the same situation, but let's be honest, it's primarily women, okay? And um, it is critical um, now that this has been brought to light uh, that something be done about it. Because I'll tell you right now, if that bill or if that had been made a law, and if that law had been put into place several years before this happened to Micah, there is no doubt in my mind that this possibility she would still be alive. And the reason for that is because every single place that she went to to get help, I mean every place that she went to to get help, it, she, did, she didn't get the help. She didn't get the help that, was, that she needed to escape from that situation. Yeah, I feel like this is a problem overall. Um, I can say briefly from an experience of my own, I was having an issue with a gas station attendant. His remarks just kept getting creepier and creepier. He had always come in, like you could always smell alcohol on his breath. And he used to be an employee there, uh, but I don't know, he was like supposed to move and didn't. I think he was just having some issues. Anyways, I went in one time, and I wasn't even by myself, but he was, I think he was a customer, not even working this day. And he came up behind me and like bear hugged me. And due to a, a, a extensive history with um, SA, uh, it, it put me into an immediate um, panic attack. Long story short, I was basically told the same thing, that there was nothing that they could do because he didn't technically do anything. I wanted to file the report just so that there was something reported in case something unfortunately did happen. At least I had reported a prior incident that could be pulled up again. So I know this happens. I had made a whole video about it when it happened because I was so distressed because I was already going going back and forth in my mind morally of what to do. So finally, when I got the courage to try to put a stop to this guy being a creep, I literally went to law enforcement and they told me to turn around and go away. There are still things pending, but I had to go and try to get a restraining order on somebody. And I say try, because even though this person kept showing up to my house, and allegedly his friends were also watching me and stuff. It wasn't enough to go get a restraining order on someone. So I 100% believe that everywhere that Micah went, she was turned away for help. And this really needs to change. And it's because the laws are not <laughs> set up. They can actually be abused. And that, and that was happening. So had that been in place, it would have created stumbling blocks to start with. Okay, The police would have had something to look to. Whenever police hear I'm being abused, they say, where are the marks? Okay, they're looking for physical evidence. Um, this is abuse that does not leave marks on your body, but it leaves horrible marks on the psyche, the mind, and self-confidence of a person. And it is difficult for an officer to show up and, 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 and determine, you know, is this a coercive control situation? And so I believe that people are a little bit hesitant about it because when you take the, the items one by one, in and of themselves do not seem to be, you know, something that would be considered illegal in and of itself. And, and, the point is is that all of the different types of tactics and examples of course of control that is outlined in the bill you have to put them together and in the totality of the circumstances pulling all of that together then appears the crime so the problem with that is that there may be an opportunity to abuse even that situation okay or that it goes too far that it crosses the line that a that an alleged victim is utilizing that um actually for a control tactic reversed so the way How do we that, prevent that from happening though is there a way to draw the the line absolutely i have a theory my theory is this first of all whenever police officers show up to any place where there's an alleged crime 
Um, they, they investigate, they ask questions, they do that sort of a thing. Uh, usually police officers are going to arrest someone whenever there's, you know, probable cause for the arrest that they can see marks on the hand, whatever the bruise, that is probable cause that they can see. So they can make that arrest. Now, if there's a situation, um, that's much bigger, in other words, like a felony, those require a warrant. Okay, so that means that if an officer observes these types of behaviors and says, hey, I'm not sure, but it appears that this may be a coercive control situation, you know, I can't arrest this guy on site, but let me take this information to our local magistrate. And then the magistrate looks at it and, and determines, compares it to the law that will, you know, hopefully be written one day. Uh, compares it to the law and determines whether there's probable cause more likely than not that's what that means more likely than not that there is a crime occurring here and then they can take that warrant and execute the warrant and pick up the person and arrest them for it and then at that point it's going to be up to the solicitor to garner the rest of the evidence you know the journals the patterns the 19 phone calls to the police and all the things that have been reported um so then it, that to me would afford some protection from utilizing the um the law itself as a as a tool against someone else but it's critically important uh, that it goes a step further because once uh, once someone is arrested for that type of for that crime, we'll call it for that crime. I think that the next step that needs to happen is when they get before the bondsman, which they're going to get, and of course once they get out, they are mad, right? So I think that it should be mandatory that anyone who's arrested under course of control must wear a GPS monitor. No questions about it. It has definitely got to be one part. Um, mandatory as part of the bond uh, that's being issued. So I think warrants um, are the way to do that. They can collect the evidence and have a magistrate determine if that's something that should be executed or not. And in this I don't understand how JP got away with so much. I mean, the tracking, like this is all just okay. There's, there, there's too many holes in the law, I believe, that you can get away with so much until you basically commit an act. Um, and I think we need more laws put in place for protection. Like she was alluding to the GPS trackers on people who uh, are found guilty of coercive control uh, and so on and so forth. But this is definitely something that I think needs to be worked on and talked about. It's had some of those statutes been on the books and that probable cause, more likely than not, mm -hmm. tell me how that could have impacted what happened to Mike and well, the, in terms of, for instance, whenever you call police, um, when you're at home in your jurisdiction, usually the police officers, when they're assigned, they're, you know, they're familiar with whatever territory. They also can look up quickly and say, oh, have we ever been in this home before? So they're like, oh, they're calling again. Uh, they called about this before. So the police officers can pick up a pattern with regard to actual calls. So had that happened that would have alerted the police officer that there was a bit more going on here i also think that there would have been an opportunity sometimes what police do or a lot of times what they do is they try to diffuse a situation when they get there to see oh let's see what what's happening oh you took her cell phone you, you give it back to her <laughs> and you know and, and, and yeah and diffuse the situation uh sometimes what they'll do is you know encourage uh, Sir, you need to, you know, can you go stay at your mom's or your best friend's tonight till everything calms down? Or maybe there's a situation where people are, you know, under the influence of alcohol and they're acting out and things that you do whenever you're under alcohol may not do, you know, sober. So, um, and then also interviewing her when she would say things like, you know, he's put trackers on me, he's, you know, following me everywhere, he's showing up in places I wouldn't expect him to show up, I'm in the middle of lunch and he turned off my cell phone, you know, and he demoralizes me, he's called me names, he sent me threatening letters, he's incessantly calling me, I've told him over and over and over and over again. Hold on, hold on, sorry, my back is killing me, I just have to adjust. Okay. Stop contacting me, and even after a police officer told him to stop contacting her, um, he did again. So when she's sitting there verbalizing all of these different things in the story, the 
then the radar goes off into um, the police officer who would say, hey, I think this is something that we need to report and put together, do an affidavit and submit it to the judge to see if the judge thinks there's enough here to issue a warrant for his arrest for violating coercive control. You mentioned earlier that Micah was failed by yes. the system, that she did the things that we want people to do, that we tell people to do, even though it was a conflict for her to do those things, in some some cases difficult for her to do, but she nonetheless yes. did those things. If a law is passed that addresses some of these issues, these deficiencies, um, as you refer, in the yes. course of control arena, if we don't have officers, prosecutors, judges who are going to consistently enforce those statutes, someone who has connections with law enforcement like John Paul Miller, we keep hearing that you, know, you don't know how powerful this guy is, the church and these connections he has. How does that play into it? Well, I think that, um, you know, education is key here. Um, I understand, you know, people have um, sometimes legitimate concerns about the status or the position or the power of someone. Um, if, if there are resources made available, which they are not in Horry County, it's so embarrassing that there has not been a battered women's... Um, I just realized I've been pronouncing it Horry County, and she said Horry County. I don't think the H is pronounced you know, shelter here in over a decade, which is just um, uh, disgusting, in my opinion. Um, there's not enough resources. There are actually a couple of websites that, that a person can go to to get some information on what can I do, where do I go, how do I get help. Um, and I actually sat down uh, one evening and I, I role-played for a minute. I, I said, okay, I'm going to pretend that I'm in a coercive control relationship and that he's gone to sleep and I got or passed out drunk whatever it is I got a few minutes to get on the computer that he does not allow me to get on um, and I got on there and I tried to do some research real fast a bunch of junk popped up and then finally I got I finally I got to a place while I'm still breathing heavy thinking he's gonna wake up any minute from me clicking on the keys right uh, a website pops up and says, you know, I'm basically at the right place and what can I do? And it was call a number and um, and also if it, it had what they called a, a, a exit button because if he walks in and sees him on the computer, it's, what are you doing on the computer? What were you looking up? What were you doing? Okay, so you want to be, to have something on the screen that says, I was looking up a recipe, you know, or something. I remember, again, when I was going for my own restraining order in the court, I ended up speaking to people from, I'm not going to name, uh, for just for safety reasons, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to name the program because I think it's different in different areas of the country. But it was basically like a safe haven place I called and I explained the situation. And it really wasn't anything more than just like, aw, I'm sorry. I couldn't leave my home. There was no real place to go, you know. it. But when I called, I do remember one of the first things they asked me when I answered was that, am I in a safe place or is there like a chance that someone uh, could see or hear what I was doing that I didn't want to. She's talking about here, uh, victims going onto websites and looking for safe havens. If the perpetrator did happen to come up behind your shoulder or see what you were doing, that it would appear as like a recipe page or like something other than you know what they were actually looking for uh, for it, but it's for safety. Trust me, it's. Um, and so that website had an exit button, and when you hit the exit button, it's supposed to take you to a weather station. When I hit the exit button, it went to the Google search bar. So that would the question then would have been, what were you about to oh. look up? Okay. Yeah, that's not, they got to fix that. It's not working properly. And I really, honestly, I cannot figure out for the life of me why people in general, and especially people who are in power that can make a difference, do not really 
have any sympathy or have any uh, concern about the gravity of abuse in a home. It, it's like it's not happening to me. It doesn't exist. The, the, another thing is like, and I'm a, this is just slightly off topic, but I'm just incensed in how it's not being properly addressed, uh, any form of abuse. There's this, there's this, I don't know, they're supposed to have this operation to help with, uh, you know, people who are in human trafficking, sex trafficking and things like that. And the state and the governor who else was just applauding themselves and what they're doing. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. I walked through an airport, and there was a tiny little sign that said, if you're a victim, call this number, which was a number that no one would ever be able to memorize. Can we get a hashtag one, two, a hashtag one, something that's text fast, code or something? Something that's easy, something, you know, 1-800-HELP-ME or say. Oh, yeah, we have 911. You have what? What is what is the UK's 999? Something simple, easy to remember. Uh, not that you have to stare at a sign and try to remember it. If you're a victim, oh, let me just write it down real quick. Yeah, I see the point that she's trying to make. Or something. It was the like number. The suicide prevention line. And... Yes, it was ridiculous to me. I was like, this is laughable and it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. That same information which should have been on the back of every single door of every stall in there. Because, you know, and there should be hot phones on the wall that whenever you walk by, you can grab it real fast and say, help me. What's going to happen? Boom, cameras are on it. Notice has gone out. Can we get some real help out here? And that's the thing that people, you know, our government or the po folks who are supposed to be helping who walk around and pretend that they are and tout that they are. Okay, where's our abuse shelter for women? It's not here. Oh, Where are I really love the idea that she had of like literally on the back of every bathroom stall or just plastered everywhere. Um, it doesn't even have to be hideous, but you can place it. In, in in strategic places where it's accessible everywhere um i love the idea of that for having like a hotline because you think not just coercive control when it comes to relationships all the trafficking we're hearing about i think it would be a major step forward um even doing something as simple as that actual real solid uh resources there is a a, a resource booklet um, that I downloaded and it gave phone numbers to call. Oh, if you're in an abusive situation, call this number. I called it. It was out of service. Please help me somebody. Well, there are powerful elected officials here. I mean, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, the, the South Carolina Senate, Luke Rankin, he's a, represents this area. Where is he? Yeah, absolutely. I would like to know where he is, but I'll tell you this. He, he cried like a baby on Facebook because I called him out for not doing his job. Senator um, Rankin. Excuse me? Senator Rankin did. Senator Luke Rankin cried like a baby on Facebook because I called him out. He was, and still is, head of the Judiciary Committee. Micah's Law is what I'm going to call it, the course of control bill, was introduced multiple times, twice in the House and once in the Senate. You get it in the Senate, you got the most powerful senator that's there ahead of the judiciary. You think he's got some power? Yes, he's got power. So he failed to use the power to take care of the citizens of the state of South Carolina. He walks around saying that he made a difference or makes a difference, that he's done so much for this county or this state, etc. Please, please, please tell me why. Please tell me why when there was a request put forward for money to build a battered women's shelter, um, which we haven't had since for 12 years. We refer everybody wow. down to Georgetown. Good luck getting there. Um, where is the money for that? So there are two very fine gentlemen who have been working on the project, um, Fred Nesta and uh, Mike King. They themselves, just citizens. They're not involved in government saw this need and they have been working diligently to try to raise the money for years raise enough money to build this shelter they were successful in finding um 
you know, a, a wonderful donor, a benefactor who gave land for it. Uh, they put together the plans, the drawings, and so forth. Turns out they needed about $3 million. $3 million. So they go before or have someone put forth a request in the, the budget to have some money, you know, given to them to help do this very, very important thing that helps a lot of people in our community. Um, they were shot down on the $3 million. But they were kind enough to give them $1 million. That's a lot of money. That's great, but we need three. So fast forward a little bit, and there was a request put in by another local representative for $3 million. The $3 million that was needed for the 6 or $7 million building that's being built for the um, dog pound, homeless animals. Homeless animals got $3 million while he approved $1 million for abused women and children. I love Old Yeller just as much as the next person. But are you kidding me? I, I, I try to keep my opinions at a minimum because I really just try to react. But some things, I just, I can't. Um, why is it that a group of older men called the Senate who are passing these laws get to then determine how much, how much danger and how much protection and how much safety needs to be offered to women? I heard a problem. I think you're out of touch. He's out of touch with what's important to the citizens. You know, I... I like these things about, oh, we're going to, you know, make the roads better and whatever. That's How right. about we start with but. the quality of life inside the home of people? How about we go to that place? How about we put some money into education so that people understand how insidious and how abusive this form of abuse truly is. People cannot wrap their mind around it. When you're living in it, you feel like that there, it's, it's ghost stuff. It's invisible things that chip, 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 chip away at the person until they become so feeling of, you know, no self-worth. Um, total depression, total despair, total of, I have to give up and stay here. That happens a lot. Micah took her a little while. She got empowered. She finally got empowered. And she felt empowered when she walked into this office and sat down with me. She was ready to move forward. And she was, she was upset about what had happened to her. So again, she's going to retain a lawyer, be empowered, walk in, be ready to move on from JP when seeming it seems like for a long time this is something that she wanted to do but was too afraid. Now has the confidence to do so, just got recently baptized, and now she's going to kill herself? And her eyes were opened, and she said, you know, I didn't know. Didn't know. Now she knows. Now she knows. When you mentioned earlier about the, the sacrifice. Yes. Do you believe that Micah's sacrifice is what it will take to get these issues, the attention, the legislation. The I sure hope so. What they deserve. I, I hope it doesn't take another woman with a similar case coming out. How many times is it going to have to happen? I sure hope so. You know what? I don't know that it will, but I certainly hope that it will. You know, I think that Senator Luke Rankin, instead of, you know, making his little whiny post on Facebook, um, <laughs> should have picked up the phone and gave me a call and said... I really want to look up this post after if I can find it. Attorney Ward, Regina Ward, Regina, um, heard what you said. Um, I think you're right. I think this is something that needs to be addressed. I want to be held accountable and say, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it was on there and something happened. I don't know. Maybe there was another priority that took it. I don't know. How about give me a call? Stand up and be what you said that you were elected to do. Be strong in this. Stand forward. Go forward. People follow him. Make a difference. If While you're elected, it's not about you. It's about us. It's about the people. It's about what we need. And I think that he is out of touch with what general society needs. 
but come on, be a man and pick up the phone and give me a call. Help me out here. You have the power to do it. And if you don't help me out right here, that tells me everything I need to know about you. And I hope that it tells the rest of the world about him. Hopefully we'll get some outcomes out of this process. One last question I've heard that John Paul Miller is not too fond of the Micah's Law movement. Oh, get over yourself. He is Sorry. eagerly attempting to leverage the removal of Micah's name from that. Is that something that's on the table, or is this going to be Micah's Law or nothing? I don't really think that he has any control over that. It's mm -hmm. really the legislative body that would determine if it's going to be also known as. It's going to have the coercive control. Of course, what we will be doing is asking the judiciary or the General Assembly to consider adding that to the bill. We want it to be called Micah's Law, not because of just Micah. But because of Micah's situation and so much national, worldwide attention has been brought to this, when you say the word or the name Micah, what happens right here is the abusive things that she went through. So people will immediately recognize what that is and connect it. So it would not only be, you know, a wonderful, wonderful, you know, a tribute to what she what her life meant here, what it actually, what it ended up meaning in the end. And also it's, um, you know, it's already well known. It's a household name. So let's call it what it is. Yeah, it's a little too late. Sometimes the people choose the name before. Well, I'm going to call it Micah's Law no matter what name they choose. But again, this guy continues to make himself look guiltier and guiltier and guiltier every video that I watch. Why would you, unless you were guilty and didn't want to be affiliated with the name because every time they think of that name, they think of you being a bad guy, JP, wouldn't you want your wife's name affiliated with that law? One good reason, JP. I would love to hear it. Anyways, that is the whole interview with Regina Ward. I will keep you guys updated as new information comes out with this case and further cases in the future. If you enjoyed, please go ahead and show me by leaving a like. Also, you can subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos. And I'll see you in my next one.